Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. We're gonna close out our series on the VX6R, but today we're gonna to talk about the Mars Mod, what it is and why you might wanna apply it to this radio. If you're like me and a prepper and concerned about everything that's going on in the world, what I'm about to show you today will give you some ability to have interoperability with other radio services. Let's check it out. All right, before we jump into the Mars conversation, let's revisit what the VX6R is capable of doing. This is a tri-band radio that can transmit on the two meter band, the 70 centimeter band, and even 220 megahertz. Those are three amateur radio bands. Uh, the first two are actually the workhorse for VHF and UHF communication. 220 is more obscure and most radios don't support that. So that's also a really cool option if you are a technician class operator to have a little bit of room in terms of uh, people not being on the air. And it's, it's technically less likely for people to overhear your conversation, um, even though it's over the clear. So that's kind of cool. Now the Mars mod, and we'll dive to that, into that in a second, will allow us to unlock the transmit capabilities of this radio. And one of the things that allows us to do is also transmit on six meters, which is allowed with your technician class privileges. So we technically can get four bands to transmit on legally with this modification. And like 220 megahertz, the six meter band is also one of those bands that's more obscure in terms of the HTs. Uh, in fact, I am running a, a six meter antenna right now on the VX6R. This is actually the antenna from the VX7. Uh, so this antenna is resonant and will not damage the radio. So bottom line, the Mars mod out the gate, if applied to this radio, will unlock our transmit capabilities and at the very least give us four or a total of four amateur radio bands to transmit on, three of which are already included by default. All right, let's take a minute and talk about Mars. It's more than just unlocking your transmitter uh, to make it do things it's not supposed to do. Well, in fact, there is a purpose. And in fact, in a lot of cases, you are uh, supposed to unlock these radios. Uh, so Mars at its very core stands for the Military Auxiliary Radio Service. It is a joint partnership between the U.S. military and licensed amateur radio operators. And the goal is for people like myself who decide to go into this program to volunteer their time, their skills, and their equipment to serve some of the mission objectives by the U.S. military. In the past, the U.S. military, specifically during the Vietnam era, uh, was enlisting the help of amateur radio operators to deploy their HF equipment to allow GIs overseas to talk to their loved ones in the States by bridging the communication with the telephone network. Today, the Department of Defense actually has a slightly different objective, and that is the ability to have a network of communication that's not reliant on internet and cell infrastructure. Uh, so I'll be looking at joining the Mars program next year for 2023. So with commercially available radios, whether we're talking VHF, UHF here, or uh, HF radios, in order to join that program, you need to transmit outside of the amateur radio bands, specifically the military bands. So most radios will allow you to apply the Mars mod to this so that you can legally work with the military uh, to fulfill their mission objectives. Uh, so I don't think too many people talk about the benefits of the Mars mod. They typically talk about it in the light of it being illegal to use, but you know, if life and limb are on the line, all bets are off. We'll talk about that portion here in a second. So I just wanted to give you guys some historical context that the Mars mod actually does have a real benefit and does have some real um, value in terms of us as Americans and, and as amateur radio operators to support something bigger than ourselves. All right, so maybe Mars is not for you, uh, but you do have the desire to have interoperability with other radio services in an emergency, and that's key. Uh, like I said, these radios are Part 97 certified, which means that they are intended to be used for transmission on the amateur radio bands. There are other radio services that fall outside of part 97 and have their own regulations and constraints. Uh, the three big ones are FRS, GMRS, and MERS. We're not gonna do a deep dive into those today. But suffice it to say, uh, we'll start at the bottom here. This is an FRS radio. Uh, it stands for Family Radio Services, or 
family radio service. And these are the radios that you find at, at Walmart or the sporting goods store. You'll usually find them in pairs or in packs of four, and they're fairly limited. These are license free, which means you don't need a license to operate them. And um, with that comes a lot of compromise. Uh, the antennas are fixed, you can't remove them. Uh, the power output is limited and the range is typically less than a mile. But these radios are typically found uh, on the trail by backpackers and hikers to keep in touch. So the first use case that I like to say, um, if you're in an emergency, let's say that your life is at jeopardy or somebody else's and you have a VX6R with the Mars mod, if you program all of the FRS channelized frequencies into a uh, set of memories in your VX6R, you can now transmit and have interoperability with these sets of radios. Again, that is not legal uh, in general per the FCC, but like I said, in that life or death scenario, uh, it's perfectly legal. Now, the next radio that kind of falls with FRS uh, is GMRS. In fact, there's some overlap between frequencies. Um, and again, the Mars mod will allow you to technically, not legally, but technically transmit and communicate with the GMRS radios. I actually don't have one. I'm not a licensed GMRS operator. Uh, I suggest you do explore that. If you don't have your ham license, the uh, fee, I believe, is like $35 now and covers your entire family and uh, the restrictions in terms of power and the antenna are removed so you get a lot of capability. The last radio I want to talk about or the last radio service is MERS which is multi-use radio service and this is a uh, radio service that I believe is undervalued today. It's limited by two watts but gives you a lot more power than the FRS radios. Namely you have the ability to remove and replace the antenna with a higher gain antenna you get a little bit more power, you get uh, two watts. So for those of you guys who have seen my videos where I've been experimenting with 300 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts doesn't seem bad anymore. In fact, it's an upgrade in terms of some of the experiments we've been doing. What's nice about MERS is that it's also license free, which means you don't need a license. I can hand this to my wife and she can use this. So for us, our standard now, like when we go take the RV and she chases me in the Jeep, we actually use uh, the MERS radios because they have more power and it can put a high gain antenna. So likewise, when we do the Mars mod on the VX6R, I would traditionally only be able to listen to the MERS traffic. With the Mars mod, I could actually transmit. Again, not legal to do so, but again, if someone else happens to have a MERS radio and your life is at jeopardy and you need to transmit, now you have interoperability with um, the MERS radios. So I'll put a link below to these BTEC MERS, I think V1, because they're absolutely great to have in your kit. Uh, from a community perspective, these are the radios I'm buying to hand out in an emergency for my area because they're relatively inexpensive and I can give them to my neighbors now and they don't need a license to use it and they get a little bit more power. So that's also a good way to help support the channel, guys. So I'd appreciate that. All right, so now let's assume we have our Mars mod on the radio. Actually, you know what? We have not talked about how to do the Mars mod. Let's start there. So the Mars modification is uh, fairly straightforward if you feel comfortable in your skills and have the right equipment to do so. In this video, I'm not gonna talk about how to physically do the Mars mod yourself. I have not done it personally to uh, my VX6Rs. I did it personally to my previous EDC radio, which was my FT60. The way to do it differs from radio to radio. Uh, what I did instead, and what I do recommend, is if you guys buy this radio brand new, especially from uh, the Ham Radio Outlet, there's an option whereby you can pay for HRO to do the Mars mod for you. And it, it will run you, I think it's like $34.95. And what's cool about that is when you get your radio, it's already fully unlocked and capable, and you didn't have to crack this thing open, pull out a soldering iron, and potentially damage your radio. So that would be my recommendation to everybody is just have the ham radio outlet do it for you if you buy it new. I did call them the other day and said, hey, um, I've got an older VX6R. I did not modify it. Can you guys still do it? And he said, yes. Uh, apparently the turnaround time if the technician is on site is about 24 hours and all you have to do is drop off the radio. 
Uh, I also asked if they needed uh, paperwork from the Mars program, and they said no. So let's just leave it at that. So that's what I would recommend is just have uh, the ham radio outlet or uh, if there's another uh, vendor that you trust, do it for you. Otherwise, the interwebs are uh, a rat's nest of information and you can explore potentially damaging the radio on your own. All right, so uh, someone asked me, how do I program my radios to support all of these other radio services? Well, the nice thing about the VX6 is it has something called memory groups. And that's how I typically like to store my frequencies. Uh, so for example, I will create uh, two memory groups. Uh, the first one I'll create is a memory group for MERS, and I'll program the five channelized frequencies and then label them MERS one through five. So it's very easy for me to take my radio, hit the VM key, go into memory mode, and then hit the band key and switch into MERS. Likewise, I'll create a second memory group called FRS, and I'll actually lump together FRS 1 through, I don't know, 12, 13, and then all of the GMRS frequencies. So I basically have the ability now to have a channelized radio. So two memory groups dedicated, one for MERS and the other one for FRS and GMRS. I do the same thing for other types of communication, but uh, I think that's the simplest way to do this. Uh, personally, I don't use a programming cable. I kind of sit down here and do it all by hand. And I got to tell you, the manual actually is pretty good with the VX6R, so I don't want to get into the propeller head nonsense of showing you how to program your radio. I just want to plant the seed of how I do it and what's possible. You guys freaking read the manual yourself. Wait, that was rude. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this mini-series on the VX6R. We're going to move on to other things. Uh, this weekend, I'm actually doing a field training exercise for the purpose of legally transmitting on the air with my amateur radio license, but practicing with a group of guys. And we're gonna be taking out my man pack, which we'll talk a little bit about. I don't know if you guys have seen this, especially the newer viewers, but um, it's inspired by military radios. Uh, this is the Yaesu FT8-8900. I've got some digital capabilities here, can do voice. This will act also as the drop-in uh, repeater. And then I interface it with my Panasonic Toughbook for doing a whole bunch of really cool uh, digital communications with my team. So stick around for that. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of this in the coming months. Um, outside of that, we're gonna switch over to uh, doing a lot of work on HF. I've got some antennas that I want to show you how to deploy and uh, support local and regional uh, communication without infrastructure, but more on that later. Uh, our Next video maybe, or the next one, uh, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers and I'm gonna be doing the giveaway for the Iluence HD1. So please stick around for that. Um, I'm only gonna, when I drop that video, I'm only gonna have one week for you to uh, elect to join in the drawing and we'll give away roughly about $350 worth of free gear. So I wanna thank everybody, especially those on Buy Me You Coffee who have been supporting me for Oh, at least the last year. Really appreciate the donations and support. Uh, for everybody else, especially you new guys, stick around. Uh, I know amateur radio and radio is not easy. Uh, go back through my older videos. Uh, probably the best thing to do is really start from two years ago and work forward, mostly because I've only been on the air for two years and this shit ain't that hard uh, as long as you just kind of give it some time. All right, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Uh, provide their time, their skills. I think I said this already. <laughs>